How do we solve the debt problem today? The only way to do it is to wipe out the debts that can't be paid. If uh, mortgages uh, are 500000 on a $250,000 house, you've got to write down the mortgage to the, uh, to the market price and you've got to have the creditors take a loss for their bad loans. Is the bailout of the banks going to solve this financial crisis? No, the bailout of the banks is only paying the creditors uh, and giving the creditors the money for the bank loans without uh, giving a penny of debt relief to the actual debtors who owe the loans. All it means is that the government is taking over the uh, creditor position and it's uh, kicking out the uh, homeowners and throwing the But won't the taxpayers the get their money back in the end? Uh, if the debts are if the taxpayers could get their money back, then you can be sure that private enterprise would have come in and they would have bought the mortgages. If you have the marketplace not buying the mortgages, if you have the bank saying, this is, uh, these are junk mortgages and this is toxic waste, how on earth can the taxpayers make money off toxic waste? Is it really a good investment for the taxpayers to come in and bail out uh, the uh, banks that say we've made junk mortgages and this is toxic waste and we weren't able to sell it to find a greater fool. Uh, there's no way the taxpayers can make money on okay, that. Okay, now look, I know you've been an economist in Wall Street, you teach economics in universities all over the world actually, uh, you're a consultant to governments around the world and yet you think there are lessons to be learned from the ancient world that somehow in the biblical times the debt cancellation was something that we can learn from today. In what way? Well, for 3,000 years, from Sumer to Babylonia uh, to the uh, Jewish lands with the Jubilee Law, they all had the same policy. And uh, uh, when a new ruler would uh, take the throne for the second year in Babylonia and Sumer, uh, he had a three-pronged solution. He would liberate the debt bondsmen, he would return the lands to people who'd lost them for foreclosure, the home, the basic self-support, and he would can't annul the uh, personal debts. And by wiping the bad debts off the books, he'd create a clean slate. And this was exactly the policy that was taken over uh, in Jewish law in Leviticus uh, by the Jubilee year. So you're now saying that there is a way to translate that history into modern economics to solve the global financial crisis. Yes, uh, antiquity managed to uh, last for 3,000 years without a financial bubble, without an economic bubble, and continually restoring order. And antiquity realized uh, something that the modern economists uh, don't. They realize that debts tend to grow in excess of the ability to pay. And uh, when the debts did that in antiquity, the ruler would cancel the debts. Now that was very easy in antiquity because most debts were tax debts owed to the palace. And it's easy to cancel debts when the debts are owed to you. It's harder to cancel debts uh, once you got to Greece and Rome and uh, the debts were owed to private creditors. That's where the problem began. So now, uh, 2,000 years later, we can't just cancel the debts uh, by rule of the uh, government. Well, you actually can because the debts are going to be written off. Take uh, already they estimate that there are, they've said there are $8 trillion worth of bad real estate debts. Now, if the government would have just let market conditions take their place, uh, when Le Lehman Brothers went bankrupt in uh, uh, September, Lehman Brothers mortgages were trading on the market at 22 cents on the dollar. Now, at this point, uh, buyers could have come in, bought the mortgages, at 22 cents on the dollar and then gone to the homeowners and the real estate owners and said okay uh, we're going to renegotiate your mortgage at uh, 22 cents or maybe 24 cents on the dollar or even 25 cents on the dollar that would have given uh, them a, a profit they would have marked down the debts to the ability to pay uh, or to the market price and one way or other the debts are going to have to be uh, written down to the ability to pay otherwise they're not going to be paid if people can't pay more their uh, debts, uh, they, they won't be. The question is, how won't they be? So why aren't governments doing that, writing off the debts or allowing the debts to be cancelled today? Very good question. The reason is that the largest contributor to the political campaigns is the financial sector, and the governments uh, have a choice. They can save the economy or they can save the creditors that made the bad loans. They've said, we don't care about the economy, we're bailing out the creditors, that's our constituency, and that's what the governments are doing today. They're not saving the economy, they're saving their constituency, the creditors. They're saving London City, they're saving Wall Street, 
uh, and they're saving the bourse, uh, and uh, the economies left to shrink. And until the government saves the economy and writes down the debts to the ability to pay, there is not going to be a recovery from but this But you're saying then that governments are acting in bad faith? They certain, they're not acting democratically. It's they, the, what the governments have done have been to turn from a democracy into an oligarchy. And we're seeing an oligarchy and, in fact, a kleptocracy emerge here. Uh, and the governments are not doing what the people have expected them to do. They're not representing the interest of their constituents. But President Obama says he's going to effect the change. It's not business as usual in Washington. Yeah, uh, uh, when Obama talks about change, he's not talking about uh, financial change. Uh, he's not talking about economic change. He's talking about uh, work, workmen's uh, laws, of health reform, uh, of racial equality. He's not talking about uh, any economic change at all because, in fact, he's reappointed the Bush uh, administrators and the Clinton administrators. He's brought back the same people who brought us uh, the Russian crisis. And if you want to see what their plans are for the United States, look at what uh, Obama's team did when they had a free hand in Russia in the 1990s. They brought uh, the biggest uh, inequality and kleptocracy uh, in modern times. So Michael, you're in London to address a conference here at the University of London. What is it that you're going to tell them? Well, I'm going to tell them that the finance sector and the real estate and the insurance sector are not part of the real economy of production and consumption. The asset and wealth sector is different from the production sector. You can think of the financial sector as being wrapped around the real economy almost li uh, like a parasite, and that's why it's been called parasitic for so long. The financial sector extracts interest from the economy. Uh, the property sector ex extracts economic rent, as do monopolies. Now, uh, the key thing about parasites is that it's not simply that they extract nourishment from the host. Uh, the parasite takes over the host's brain to make it think it's part of the economy. Uh, to make it think it's part of the host's own body and in fact uh, that it's almost like a child of the host to be protected and that's what the financial sector has done today. You have Obama coming out and saying we have to save the banks in order to save the real economy. The fact is you can't serve both the parasite and the host. Now the amazing thing is that we have the economic training tablets uh, from Babylonia from 2000 BC and the mathematical models they had of the economy in 2000 BC are more sophisticated than any of the mathematical models that they use today for government planning. And the reason is that they calculated uh, how long it takes for a debt to double. Any interest rate is a doubling time. They knew in 2000 BC that the debts doubled. They also knew that the economy grew in an S-curve. They had uh, mathematical models for the growth of herds in an S-curve, uh, for agricultural production. So uh, they knew that the tendency was for debts to grow faster than the economy could grow. And that's why when every new ruler took the throne, they'd cancel uh, the debts. But look, uh, we've had Nobel Prize winning economists uh, telling hedge funds how to operate. Are uh, you saying they are clueless on mathematics? Well, that's a very good question. Well, you look at the fact that long-term credit management went broke uh, using the Nobel, the Nobel Prize winners. The, the, the mathematical models that won the Nobel Prize have led to $450 trillion of derivative contracts that are now junk. So uh, what they won the Nobel Prize for is junk mathematics that have led to junk derivatives and junk mortgages. Uh, that's what's uh, happened.